Next up, I need to drill for the dowels that are going to align all these parts for uh, glue up. So I've got the parts together here. And remember, I have my, my lines drawn on here from before. So I need to uh, line everything up. So I'm on, a, I'm on a nice flat surface and I'm aligning the center pieces to, to my pencil lines. And then once they're there, I'll clamp this all together. That looks good. And then I'll get these so they're across from each other there. And I want to now clamp these together. Now, it's a little tricky getting these in the right place. And you don't really know until you're over there. But uh, I want to drill these on the drill press. So I want to make sure the clamps are inboard a little bit from each end. So I'll have access to the uh, corners. So I'm going to be drilling here. So that all looks good and we'll head to the drill press next. These are the dowels I'm going to use. These are 5 16 So I've got a, of course, a 5 16 bit in there. I've got some spacers here because I need clearance so that the clamps aren't uh, rocking on the bench here. So I want to put these holes, you know, in, in one, two, one in each corner. And I'm going to have a little more of a challenge at this end because this clamp is fairly close to here, so I might have to reposition that. But this, this one should be no, no problem. To do the, uh, the other side, I'm going to have to reposition the clamp. So I've got another clamp here. So I'm going to put a clamp on here first, and then I'll take off the, uh, the other clamp. So I want to make sure that piece doesn't move, of course, when I'm doing this. So I can unclamp this now. And I've got my dowels ready to go here. So I'll put one in in each corner. Now I did, uh, I had the depth set. Now, it just hit me, I should not have drilled these uh, bottom holes here. I was wondering why I had four dowels and eight holes. So that just made my plane a little shorter, but I'll be okay. So these bottom holes shouldn't be here. I'll go ahead and take those out. We'll, we'll still be fine. But uh, yeah, so I should, have, I should have four dowels, one in the top corner on each, uh, each end here. So next up, I need to uh, cut these flush. So, so these need to be flush or below the surface. Okay, they can't be above the surface because when I, when I end up eventually gluing this together, I need to you know, clamp, clamp all this. And if those dowels are, are above the surface, they'll keep me from clamping everything together here. So right now I'm going to flush cut them, make sure they're flush. I may even just sand them a little bit lower after I take the sides back off. So I've got a flush, flush cut saw here. So I've got this in a vise now and I'm going to use a chisel just to make sure that those are nice and nice and flush. So now that those are flush, I need to get this side off of here. Yeah, be a little careful. Sometimes, I, this is my glue scraping chisel. Sometimes I'll take that and carefully, there we go. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now I can't really clamp that now. 
Yeah, normally I could spin that off. Of course, now I've got those extra dowels in there, so I'll, I'll get it off. All right, I fixed my uh, screw up there. So we're going to pretend that hole's not there. Uh, like I said, norm, this will shorten my plane a little bit. Normally I, I would, you know, cut cut the end of the plane about like that. So I've, I've lost maybe three-eighths of an inch there. No big deal. Uh, now, the, you know, this piece is going to come off and on a couple of times. And it's easier to do that if those edges aren't, aren't sharp there. So I, I just, you might want to just... Just knock those corners down a little bit on, on those dowels. Just going to make it a little easier to reassemble this. We need to drill the hole for the cross pin next. So that is located, of course, on the side. And what you want to do is you want to come up a, one and a quarter from the bottom. That's shown... Uh, on here, these dimensions. So one and a quarter from the bottom and three quarter from the bed. Okay, and it's important that you come up perpendicular. Some some people measure this direction, which is not going to work. You want to measure perpendicular. So I'm going to draw a line one and a quarter up from the bottom. So I've got my uh, combination square set here for slightly less than one and a quarter because the pencil thickness will make up for that. So I'm going to draw a line there. And then I want to measure over three quarters. So there's three quarters perpendicular from the line. And I've got my T-bevel already set up to match that line. So I'm just going to come over to there. So there, and I just missed a little bit there. So I'll drill the first hole right there. So I'm back at the drill press. I still have the 5 16 bit in here. I want to make sure I've got a clean backer that I'm drilling into. If, if the backer board isn't good, then get another piece of wood because you don't, you don't want to get blowout on the back side of this cut. So I'll just go ahead and center the bit right on my mark there. To drill the, the second hole on, on the other side, I need to reassemble the, the parts here. So, the, of course, the dowels are going to align things. And I've got the hole there now, which will allow me to uh, make sure that the opposite hole is in line with that one. Of course, that plus the dowel should do it. So, I'll run the... Uh, bit down into the hole so because I, I want to start the bit when it's already in there like that i'll run my stop over here so i can to, i don't want it tight there but i just want something that's going to keep that from keeping it spinning and just to double check i want to make sure once again i've got a clean hole there or clean surface. So now I can start that. There we go. Making the cross pin is next. So I've got a piece of half inch square hardwood. This this happens to be Shedua. Uh, you just want something pretty strong. I would say at least as hard as cherry. So it's been milled a half inch and I've cut it so it's just a little bit uh, shorter than the width of the body. So if you measure the body or I just held it up to this and I would say no, no more than a sixteenth inch shorter than that dimension. So I've, I've cut it to length and next I need to put the tenons on here that are going to fit in the holes that, that we drilled in the body. So you have a couple of options for that. Uh, the way that David Fink describes in the book works well. You, you establish the shoulder on the table saw. So we'll just set the blade for a very shallow cut and, and cut all the way around on each side so it, it fits in there. Uh, and then come in with a plug cutter and, and center the plug cutter and cut the tenon that way. That works just fine. The, the only downside to that is a little tricky to make sure it's centered 
And it's certainly doable, but uh, you just have to be careful when you set that up. The other way that, that I like to do, but you have to have a lathe to do it and, and some pretty rudimentary lathe skills, is to, to chuck this in a four-jaw chuck, uh, once again, after you've created the shoulders, and then very carefully turn the tenons on each side to fit in those holes. And that's fairly simple. It pretty much guarantees your tenons are going to be straight and, and in the middle of this half-inch square piece. I'm going to uh, mark on here the the width or where my shoulders need to be and then we'll go to the table saw and and just make you know four very shallow cuts on either end to uh, get started so I'm just eyeballing center here and then I'm just gonna mark one uh, one shoulder just just to get a rough reference I've got a stop set on my sled here now so I can uh, make a test cut. So I, I made that mark, but remember I said that was a little bit of a rough mark. So right now I've got the stop set, so I'm cutting a little bit outside the mark. So I want to kind of sneak up on the cut. I've got the blade, so it's just barely sticking up there. I've, you know, I'm going to be trimming off what, three thirty seconds on, on each side here. So I just need to uh, basically you know, establish that shoulder. So make a couple of cuts here, and then uh, I'll, I'll do a fit check on here, and I'll move the stop until my shoulder cuts are just slightly smaller than this uh, distance in here. I definitely don't want it equal to or bigger because if if the shoulder is bigger then it won't allow me to clamp this up and get the sides nice and flat so so just a little bit smaller than that distance should be good to go Okay, I've cut the shoulder all the way around now, so that's looking good. And I, I measured, I just took a ruler and just made sure that I've got, you know, at least five sixteenths there to cut my uh, tenon. If, I, if I'd cut my shoulders too deep, I, I'd be reducing the, uh, the material for my tenon. So hopefully this will focus so that looks like that now. And the next thing I want to do is, is, like I said, use a plug cutter to to cut that now i'm going to hold this in uh, in this vise i've got a notch cut in it here so to locate that nicely i'm also going to uh, draw some lines on here so i know where the center of the square is so i'll use my combination square with the you know, 45 degree and, and put a couple of lines there and then I'm going to use uh, this little tool I made. Now, David Fink uses a, a small drill, which works just fine, but I had some, some brass laying around. So I just took this piece and sharpened it to a point. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll center that in the drill press on my marks and then I'll switch this out for the plug cutter and I should be good to go. I've got the part centered there so that's looking pretty good. I guess I might need to move that just a touch so I'll get that maybe a little bit better centered and then I'll go ahead and switch out this alignment pin for the plug cutter. All right, I just need to clean up those uh, little corners there. 
Now you may may notice that that is not a five sixteenths tenon. That is three eighths. I could not find my five sixteenths plug cutter, so I switched to a three eighths. So I'll have to drill the holes in the plane a little bit bigger, but that's that's not a big deal. The tenon is a little bit tight in the hole, and I've, I've of course, re-drilled these holes to 3 8 So uh, I, want, I want it a little bit loose just so that we, you know, when this is in the plane, you need to be able to rotate it somewhat easily. I don't want any play there, but that's too tight. So I'm going to take some uh, sandpaper and just, just sand that till it fits in there snugly, but I can turn it without too much trouble. Then uh, after that, I will round, uh, you know, slightly pillow the ends of these. You can do that you know, with, with sandpaper pretty easily, or if you've got a lathe uh, with a four-draw chuck, you can put that in there, and, and it's a little easier to get everything symmetric. But either way works. We just, we just want, you know, just a kind of a slight pillow there, like a uh, hammer would have. I've got the sandpaper here, and I'm just going to, you know, kind of bend that so I'm creating a little bit of a curve there. And I'm turning this as I do that. This is uh, 120 grit paper. So I've gone through the grits there. I think I finished with, uh, what, 400. And I'm going to, and that looks really good. I'm going to burnish it on on my jeans here. That That's always a nice, makes for a nice surface. So I'll show a picture of that. Now, that, that looks great. I'll do the other end on the lathe, and I, I don't think we'll see any difference. All right, so I'm done now. So there's one end. And there's the other end. And I I can't even tell now which is which. So the lathe, and that, there's my center from when I was finding center. I probably should have not touched quite as hard with my, my little brass centering tool. But uh, the only thing difference between the lathe and by hand, the lathe went much more quickly. But you get the same results either way. Next up, I want to create the, the chamfer around the hole so, so that that looks a little nicer, right? The, uh, the cross pin is below that surface, so I just want a nicer transition from this face down to there. So I've got my countersink there, and I'll just create a little chamfer on each, each of the outside faces here. So I did a fit check there, and, and that looks nice. The chamfer just goes right down to the, to the base of where that little pillow starts. The next thing on the cross pin is to shape the profile of it. So when, when you're using the plane, you're going to want to reach in there and, and get a shavings out. You know, sometimes things will jam up in there, just get a shaving in there. So, so you want a surface that's comfortable to get your fingers past and all. So, in the book, uh, David shows a couple different profiles. One's just a, a D, and the other one's a little more triangular. That doesn't really matter. It's up to you. But I'm just going to take my uh, plane and and just run that across there. And uh, looks like I can get a little tear out, so I'm going to turn it around. But you know, do that until you get the shape you want. You you want the uh, the part that's facing against the wedge nice and flat, but the upper part we're going to shape to uh, some type of uh, rounded contour. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I've I've got a nice round that's that's essentially you know concentric with the tenons. 
I did. Uh, I took one one pass on each corner at the bottom there, just just to avoid a sharp corner where it's square. But uh, I think that looks great. So next up, we will glue up the blank. I'll show you how this looks first. So here it is completed. You can see the profile there. Looks good. 